There is a certain kind of bravery in speaking about something so unspeakable, even if it takes you decades to do so. Nana Rosa embodied this courage even until her last breath. For today's video, we'll be learning all about the life of Rosa Henson, one of the bravest Filipinos of our time. But let us warn you, the following video contains graphic descriptions of sexual violence. While we believe in the importance of telling these stories, we still advise you to proceed with caution. The year was 1927. Baby Maria Rosa Luna Henson was born as an illegitimate child of Don Pepe, a wealthy landowner. Because of the circumstances of her birth, she grew up in poverty in a barrio in Pampanga. Still, Rosa had big dreams. She longed to overcome her circumstances and become a doctor when she grew up. Sadly, these dreams were cut short when the Philippines was embroiled in World War II. When Rosa was just around 15 years old, she joined the Hukbalahap, the Filipino communist guerrilla forces aiming to bring down the Japanese army. But just as young Rosa was building her courage, that's when the Japanese army began to strike. While she was off to the woods to get firewood for her family, she was violently raped by three Japanese soldiers. Unfortunately, that was only the beginning. The following year, in 1943, Rosa was forcibly taken by Japanese soldiers. They imprisoned her in the local Japanese headquarters where they forced her to become a comfort woman or a sex slave for Japanese soldiers. By August, they transferred her to a larger building in Angeles, Pampanga, where she met other girls with the same fate as her. The raping continued. In her book, Comfort Women, Slave of Destiny, Rosa recounts her most harrowing experiences. She writes, Twelve soldiers raped me in quick succession, after which I was given half an hour to rest, then twelve more soldiers followed. I could not eat. I felt much pain and my vagina was swollen. I cried and cried, calling my mother. I could not resist the soldiers because they might kill me. So what else could I do? Rosa's days became repetitive. She was raped multiple times a day, every day, for months on end. She was not allowed to talk to the girls she lived with. And she was only given a limited time each day to go to the courtyard outside so she could clean herself up. Let us remind you that she was only 16 years old at the time. No one should ever suffer under that kind of horrendous experience. Least of all someone so young. Stuck in this endless cycle of suffering, Rosa didn't know what to do. She desperately wanted to escape, but she had no way of doing so. Thankfully, Rosa's old comrades came to her aid. In January 1944, Hukbalahap guerrillas attacked the building and finally freed Rosa and helped her go back to her family. But even though she was already safe, Rosa still suffered psychologically and even physically. Nine months of being a comfort woman gave her so much trauma, which also manifested physically in her body. The suffering she endured felt far from over. As she grew older, Rosa eventually settled down and married a young soldier named Domingo. We can't comprehend how difficult it must have been for Rosa to open herself up to another man because of what she's been through. But thankfully, Domingo was far from the man Rosa met when she was a comfort woman. He was gentle and kind and cared for her like no one else. They had three children together, Rosario, Rosalinda, and Jesus. By 1957, the war was long done. The country was picking up after itself, and so was Rosa. At age 30, she began working for a cigarette factory, where she remained for 34 years. But deep down, Rosa had a secret. She kept the secret close to her chest for fear of the backlash she would get if she told people about it. Many victims of sexual harassment feel this way even today. Especially in such a patriarchal country, many would dismiss victims' stories or even resort to victim blaming. The very act of retelling what happened can be traumatic as well, as it brings back visceral and horrible memories that some just want to forget. It was only by 1992, when Rosa was already 65 years old, that she decided to tell her story. Hearing comfort women from other countries speaking out about the injustices they faced gave her the courage to speak out as well. She came out publicly at a press conference that shook the nation. 
We knew about comfort women in countries like Korea and China, but we didn't know that there were also comfort women right here in our country. Inspired by Rosa's bravery, many other comfort women, most already in their late 60s, also came forward to tell the world about their stories. 50 women revealed to the world their horrendous experiences at the hands of the Japanese army during World War II. By 1993, 18 Filipino women joined Korean and Chinese former comfort women in filing a class action lawsuit against the Japanese government. They demanded a formal apology from the Japanese government, the inclusion of wartime atrocities in history books, and monetary reparations. At first, the Japanese government tried to deny legal responsibility. But amidst growing pressure and continued protests from survivors and their supporters, the Japanese government caved into one of their demands. They established the Asian Women's Fund in 1995 to collect money from private Japanese citizens for atonement payments. Rosa received 320 million yen in compensation, but died from heart complications a year later. Though Rosa has passed, her legacy still lives on, and unfortunately, so too do the demands of many other comfort women. Filipino former comfort women are still fighting for the same demands to this day, 30 years since the lawsuit. Founded in 1994, the Lila Pilipina organization is composed of survivors of Japanese military sexual slavery and joined by advocates of justice for all victims of sexual abuse done and perpetrated by foreign military forces. In addition to supporting the demands from the Japanese government, the organization also laid down demands for our own local government. Their demands are as follows. 1. To officially declare the comfort women system as a war crime, condemn the Japanese government for their direct involvement in institutionalizing such a system of sexual slavery, and demand a formal apology and compensation for all victims and their families. 2. To conduct an official investigation and documentation of the comfort women issue. 3. To include the reality of comfort women and comfort stations during World War II in the Philippine history curriculum for private and public schools. 4. To build historical markers and shrines around the country for the comfort women and other war victims of World War II as a reminder of the sad realities behind wars of aggression. 5. To provide material support for all victims, survivors, and their families. This is the bare minimum that the Japanese and Filipino governments must do for the former comfort women, and yet they remain blind and deaf to these demands. In 2018, former President Duterte famously supported the removal of a comfort women statue on Rojas Boulevard. He said, It is not the policy of government to antagonize other nations. A statement reeking of sheer disrespect towards comfort women, what they had to go through, and what they are still fighting for to this day. What a sick world we live in, that grandmothers in their late 70s and 80s still have to take to the streets and protest against the injustices they suffered through, only for their demands to fall on closed ears. But we should not lose hope. Every day, more and more people learn about these atrocities thanks to the help of organizations like Lila Pilipina. With learning comes the responsibility to fight for change. Let us take Lola Rosa's actions as an inspiration to keep fighting for what is right, even when it seems like the whole world is against you. Just last May 23, 2023, the last known comfort woman in Taiwan passed away without ever seeing justice served. Let's not let this happen to our Filipina Lolas. Let's continue to tell their stories and speak out against sexual violence. Let's continue to urge the Japanese government to pay reparations for their harsh crimes against humanity, as well as for the Philippine government to recognize and support this fight. Above all, let's continue standing strong with our incredibly brave Lolas in their fight for justice.